Okay. We're building drones. Are we, are we live? No, actually, we're recording this now, and then we'll edit it, and by the time they see it, it won't be live. Oh. It could be days from now, or longer. It just depends how long this takes. So, this, All right. is, this is Caesar. He's here to help uh, school us on drones and copters and... Are those the same thing? Well, <laughs> the reason I thought we ca I came over is because we're going to build a drone by 3D printing the parts. This particular model that we're looking to get uh, imitates the DJI Inspire 1. If you haven't seen that yet, you should probably go out and take a look at it. It's one of the coolest drones you can buy right now. And it's expensive. Yeah, it's right? pretty expensive, 2800 bucks. But once you actually get into all the parts you really need to, to have a good experience, you're going to probably be into it for about $3,600. Um, Don't say that too loud. My wife's right over there in the other room. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I mean, but, you know, who knows? <laughs> It's one of those uh, one of those things you work towards, right? So anyway, those of us lucky enough to have one of those things, you know, realize what these things are capable of. But us more uh, uh, um, normal people. <laughs> have I don't to, know if that's the right word. Have to come up with other creative means to to, to get our hands on these expensive drones. So uh, by using this site for seven ninety five, we're able to get the plans we need to create this drone. And uh, with some parts I just happen to have laying around, uh, um, we're going to uh, see if we can get this thing uh, put together and flying in the air uh, relatively cheaply. So, um, woohoo! Yeah! So, um, some of the things we're going to use today, uh, uh, what we have here is a, um, the brains. This is a um, Ardu copter, uh, part of 3D robotics setup. It's an open source flight controller that'll keep the thing flying around and in the air and do a lot of our autonomous work like return to home and fly paths. Um, really cool stuff on the cheap and and uh, lets developer, developer folks like us uh, get in there and do cool custom stuff uh, without much hassle. So what's the what's the street price on one of those? I got this for less than 50 bucks. And it came with a GPS for that price. Sweet. Yeah, this GPS in fact, a nice segue. Okay. So uh, here we have a GPS compass. Uh, which plugs into this device here, and the tiny cables, and has a breakout box with it as well, so that you can connect it via USB to your laptop. So uh, when Cosmo gets a few minutes, you can snap this together and instantly be playing with Arduino power and uh, with the UI. It's pretty slick with the uh, freeware. So uh, you're going to want to go down and grab Droid Planner um, or Ardu Pilot. I don't even think he's speaking English. No, I'm just rattling off right now. So um, anyway, that's your that's the GPS we're going to use. Um, it's a uh, Surocom. Um, it's a slower one actually. It's a 10 hertz. What? One. Yeah, it's you know it, it's it, it, I I learned and had to upgrade actually, but that should be sufficient for what we're doing right now. And, and plus, it's a cheap upgrade path to get another GPS like that. They just eight plug months. it right in. Yep, off you go. Get a 20 hertz. Okay. So a uh, series of adapters here. Um, these will just kind of make things easiest for us to. Plug and unplug everything. Um, a power distribution board. Uh, this will be kind of like the central core where all the power is distributed from the battery. So we got our battery hookup. So on that here. supports four motors. Yep, four motors there, and the power out to uh, to power your other devices like the uh, Arduino. Um, next, we have uh, some carbon tubes. I'm not sure what size we need, so I've got a couple here. These are left over from a Terra 680 build. Um, the 680. Also not English. Yeah, the Terrett's a company that makes drone, uh, drones kits, uh, as well as uh, uh, ready-to-fly uh, versions, and I bought a 680. Uh, when, when you're talking about drones, the number generally following the name is the uh, how many millimeters across this um, uh, particular drone is from uh, center motor of one motor to the farthest motor away center. Hmm. So, um, hey, keep talking. I'm going to go grab something. For example, my, mine is a 680, so it's 680 millimeters. Um, but with the 15-inch uh, blades on it, it actually comes out to 42 inches across, so about as wide as it uh, can be to fit in a trunk. Um, pretty cool stuff. I'll bring that out in a few minutes as well. Um, other things that we're looking at here, um, an alternate GPS, a little bit bigger. Depends on how big this thing turns out to be. All of the cabling we're going to need servo test unit so we can actually test 
the servo we're going to use to raise and lower the arms for the landing gear and propellers. Pretty cool stuff. So, I forgot to tell you before we started that my experience with copters and drones is this. If you can see that from way back there, this is one of those little tiny micro RC helicopters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's what I've, I'm, I'm, well, the thing, I'm good at crashing that. So This is actually pretty high tech. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is great. You need this kind of stuff to just practice. You want to get a Toys R Us drone and get insurance on it and crash it and fly it around before you take anything big up in the air. Uh, my drone is actually about 20 pounds, and if it crashes into something... It kills them? It hurts, yeah. <laughs> and um, it's expensive. And it's very expensive. There's a lot of work and, and um, uh, money involved in it when you get into those high-end drones. Um, the other stuff we have here, too, um, Cosmo's going to want to get a controller, but we can use mine for right now, which is a Tyrannus. Uh, X9, uh, where I've got an Android uh, Galaxy S uh, Quad HD tablet I'm using to do all my telemetry data, flight planning, and all that stuff on screen. And I can also keep track of my drone, so if it flies away, if something happens, a, a, a seagull snatches it. Um, you can see where it was before I can see it goes offline. Yeah, I can see where it went, uh, where it's going because of the GPS. Before the it. people in, yeah, the, and I can in the black van snatched it. it up. Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of cool things you can do around that. Um, there's true GPS tracking devices people are buying that are self-powered, that are basically, you know. Low jack. Yeah, low jack or cheating spouse, you know, uh, trackers, you know. But you put them on these for the cheap, and then they can, uh, they can track it around. And, and it'd be hard to even know that it was there. Um, Mixed in with all the other boards all the other and chips stuff, that are yeah. stuck in there. Yeah, and then we got some blades here too, some practice plastic ones. Uh, I recommend these at first so that if you happen to come in contact with flesh of any kind, it'll break first. Um, whereas the carbon fiber ones won't give uh, a whole lot. Um, and they're probably a lot more expensive. They're a bit more expensive. This was like under a dollar before these. Wow. Whereas these, the, the carbon fiber blades are probably a dollar each. So this stuff is all cheap from China, right? Yeah, cheap like from China. Ping. But the problem is that uh, um, there is no fast shipping, and you have uh, uh, customs, customs which way, can take way, forever. Way. Some stuff took months to get through customs. This this particular unit with the art, with this, even though I got it cheap for under fifty bucks, uh, it took me like three months before it showed up. In fact, I, don't, I already gave up on it and bought two more. Okay, so what's this? Oh, so and then. Um, Finally, too, we're going to look at trying to do some first-person view. Um, first-person view means that we're going to set a camera, probably a GoPro, something like that, on the on the unit for being able to record and also to be able to see. So, um, so that, you can fly the drone without knowing where it is. Yeah, you can fly it like without sitting in it. Yeah, it's like you're actually inside the drone, flying around like a pilot, and it makes it somewhere you can uh, remotely pilot it very accurately and, and have a lot of fun, race around scare your friends, all that cool stuff. So, um, But so for, for, for that here, I have a uh, Samsung Gear VR. Uh, very cool stuff. Um, it, it's very comfortable. And, uh, you know, it's a hit with a friend. So um, I highly recommend you get these. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Your, your woman will love these, especially... Uh, in the bedroom. In the bedroom, yes. <laughs> um, absolutely. will get a smile. So... Anyhow, so uh, you have a phone that goes with that. Yes. So that's just the. Yeah, this not a this, display. This is for posterity. This is just just for good looks. So. Um, <laughs> anyhow, it's working. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the Samsung Gear VR uh, snaps in here. I mean, this is the Galaxy Note 4 snaps into the Gear VR, and so it's powered by this particular cell phone, which uses a Quad HD screen. That's and, a lot of HDs. Yes, and um, provides a VR experience, which I hope that we can stream to uh, into into this headset. So where does the signal get to from the phone? Does it have to have a Wi-Fi transmitter on the? Yeah, yeah. What? So what? So the well, I, I I guess well, I'll give up the idea. So what it is is I'm thinking that if we could set up a local area network, set up RTC, right, and then connect this which phone to the local. Uh, return uh, relay, to no, no. Uh, relay. Uh, well, I was return to home. Yeah, RTC is a standard for doing uh, voice over IP. Remember, for doing video. This is what I got. It's a Google standard. I have been very easy to do. It's a very easy way to set up a webcam <laughs> and stream it uh, off a web page. So what I'm thinking that we might want to try to do is that we set up a local area ne network with IAS um, and set up a web server 
that's basically going to be streaming video from that particular uh, camera. And then on this end, we'll connect to the page and be able to see the video. That sounds like really laggy. It's possible, but we're going to be on a local network, right? We're not going to be going anywhere, but just from in that area. It's something to start with, right? This is new ground. Well, well okay. Yeah, so that's, that's what I meant. <laughs> Uh, and, so and, I, I don't, we haven't uh, we haven't gone down that path yet. So that's, I was gonna tell, I forgot to idea. I forgot to tell you when we started. Mm -hmm. This um, I've been avoiding completely avoiding reading or learning about these things because as soon as I get interested in something, I get obsessed, and then they just show up at my house, and I can't stop myself. And next thing I know, I go crazy, go overboard, buy a lot of crap, and I already I've been trying not that, to do that. And I'm still here. I'm okay. Um, um, invest as much as you play. And you'll be all right. So anyway, I'm not um, sure what that means. <laughs> <laughs> another another video. So um, anyway, so we're gonna see if we can come up. Oh, with a way. you mean like financially invest? Yes. Oh. That way you can spend as much as you invest, and you can you can have fun and still feel okay about it. Okay. So um, anyway, we'll try to figure out a way to get video from the copter into the headset to fly it around. Pretty sweet, huh? Well, if we had a really long Ethernet cable, I've got some IP cameras. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> you know, it's okay if it's tethered, right? It's probably going to be laggy at first until we can come up with a better method. But but it'll be at least plausible, right? Sure. I took that from Mythbusters. It's plausible. Anyhow. Okay, so you brought your little toy over the show. Oh, yeah. So, so um, stay there for a second and let's go get it. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Think we should fly it in here? Yeah. What do you think, Daniel? Maybe. Let's you want to fly it inside the living room? No. Why not? Yeah. Because it's going to go sideways and. And scratch the ceiling. Okay. Probably, it's probably killed one of us. In the break. Yeah. So here it is. Yeah. What is the you and you built this yourself, right? This? Yeah. I mean, it it started as a kit, or did you just buy all the individual pieces? Or no. Yeah, it's a work? kit. So no, it's actually two kits. So um, I I need to go through and actually tighten some things down because I had it a little bit loose because I was still moving some things around on it. Um. So this is a Terrett 680 Pro. Um, so it's 680 center motor to center motor across. Um, but it's actually two kits. So I bought, um, the kit comes with a motherboard that's actually part of the frame. Um, and then of course the carbon fiber, other uh, second side of the frame. But I actually took a, another carbon fiber layer and added it in. The reason I did this, um, the set comes as a uh, hexacopter, so it's six six blades, as you can see. Um, but and I've it's got actually absolutely huge, by the way. Yeah, this is huge. It's it's 42 inches across, um, all carbon fiber. Um, the reason I added the second layer and used that second kit was to get three additional arms on here, as you can see. Red is forward on most uh, on most drones, so I would have a forward set uh, forward camera here, and then a, a right rear and a left rear camera as well. Um, that gave me a couple different options. Backup camera? Yeah, so, no, no, actually, it gives me the, a few different things. Um, one was that I was going to run this out to my Oculus headset for VR and do a rendering of these three video uh, streams wrapped around a 3D model, and then the Oculus itself would actually have the perspective of being in the center of a sphere with this projection happening on the inside of it, and then the position of the user's head being dictated by the gyroscopes, but actually then control the perspective within this sphere and give the user the feeling that they were actually able to look all around the drone uninhibited, but the drone itself wouldn't have to physically move to enable them to look around. It would just be switching perspective So on the fly. Uh, what you're saying, that's a fancy way of saying kick-ass 3D shit, right? Yeah, 360 video streaming in real time uh, as you're flying it. Um, non-mechanical uh, movement that saved me a ton of weight, ton of power. Um, so anyway, that's something that I was working on. Um, that's been trumped by the new Samsung Horizon camera that's coming out, uh, which makes that kind of a moot point now. Anyhow, um, so the other thing that I decided to do 
to save a lot of development effort is that I found a three-way camera switch. So it allows me ABC cameras. And so what that will let me do then is I can take my three-way dongle over here, uh, toggle switch, and be able to go... Um, camera one, camera, camera two. Okay, that's right. So I can be center <laughs> camera. And I can look back left or back right, back left, just like that by just switching a, a camera view and not actually have to move the drone to do that. Um, mm -hmm. That also is, that's also just a, another way of using it. You. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's also helpful when you're flying so that you can say, okay, you know, I need to back up a little what, what's behind me or I need to negotiate around um, whatever, you know, whatever's going on. You can, you're more situationally aware and not just fixated in one direction. So wiring, and a lot of the stuff needs to be kind of buttoned down a little bit more, but I've got a... Yeah, it's not done. Right? Yeah, it's, so I've got a Pixhawk. Hasn't flown yet. Yeah, a Pixhawk here, 32-bit uh, Arduino. Uh, uh, flight controller from 3D Robotics. I've got the 3D Robotics 900 megahertz European uh, transmitter here. Uh, gives me a really, really long range. Um, also the X8R. And that's uh, for your controller, not for camera? No, this is for telemetry. To, uh, that's actually for telemetry data to connect to the laptop. So I can send um, autonomous flight information to it and also get back information from the drone to kind of to run the application that I'm using. Uh, so that sends telemetry data. This other, this other controller here is actually the one that, uh, this transmitter here is the one that gets uh, controller and flight information from my controller from these little rubbery uh, antennas um, to fly it around. So I actually need to connect the servo cables okay, there. Okay, so underneath there you've got a couple of big LiPo batteries. Yeah, here's, here's one milliamp hour. Um, so that's, that's 10,000 milliamps, um, which would give it about 20 five minutes of flight time with a camera attached to it, with the cameras all attached and functioning. Um, and also I've got a uh, 1300 hertz uh, European transmitter here also, which gives me about a seven to nine mile range for video, to transmit video over. European, not um, Yeah, these are frequencies don't, that don't I Don't ask. Have. I have a ham license, so I can go ahead and, oh, uh, yeah, that's yeah so I can use those frequencies. Uh, it's a good thing anybody you can get use this. Yeah, yeah, anybody can get their ham license. <laughs> as soon as you power it on, the FCC is going to roll up in a van. Go down to the fire department and you fill out a form and take a simple, simple test and you have a ham license and you can use these frequencies without uh, without anybody tripping out on you. Wait, so, are you serious? Yeah, that's all it is. Oh. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, so yeah, so that's my custom Terrat 680 uh, with. Uh, uh, what's the What's the total cost on this thing so far? Um, the kits are wait, relatively wait, wait, cheap. Sit. Wait, oh wait, I guess they're at their computer. They're probably already sitting down. Okay, go ahead. Probably, about, probably close to three and a half thousand mm. dollars. Yeah, that's not a toy, not at all. Yeah, but then the, and then you throw in another a thousand for that controller over here with the with the six hundred dollar tablet on there. Too. <laughs> yeah. So that looks like fun. I don't think I'll be flying that one around in my living room. Yeah, no, this one's this is this is the real thing here. They use this type for doing like Hollywood filming and. And that type of stuff. So, and what kind yeah. of camera did you put on there? Um, I'm using these Boss Cam HDs. Um, they're really rugged and light, and um, and allow for me to do um, uh, some inter interesting integrations because most of the wiring for it's just triggered through PPM data. Uh, so, which is really handy because um, the data that comes out of your transmitter is in PPM. So, I can literally modulate things on and off just based on the channel. Um, super simple robotics. I had no idea you were this nerdy. Me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Always have been. <laughs> I just hide it very well. Yeah, man, geez. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's kick ass. Thanks for let's bringing it over. Let's build a drone. All right, let's do it.